Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so as per promise, part two of the law of quadratic reciprocity. So we're gonna supplement part one with this guy here and this guy here. And uh, we're gonna examine both these guys to see why they have to be true. But first, a couple of important notes. And the first of the two notes is pretty straightforward. It's about recognizing that saying that P is congruent to seven mod eight is the same thing as saying that uh, P is congruent to negative one mod eight. And that's because mod eight, the number seven is the same as the number negative one. Uh, and so this here is saying that uh, P is either congruent to three mod eight or P is congruent to five mod eight because the number five is the same as negative three mod eight, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And the second note is about distinguishing between the law of quadratic reciprocity and the work we did prior to it. So before we introduced the law of quadratic reciprocity in part one, we looked at A over P trying to answer the question, given an odd prime P, is A a residue mod P or a non-residue mod P? That's the question we tried to answer before the law of quadratic reciprocity. But what the law of quadratic reciprocity is trying to answer is, given A, for what kind of primes P is A a residue and a non-residue? Yeah? So that's an important distinction between uh, what the law of quadratic reciprocity is trying to answer and what the work that we did prior to it. All right. So with this said, uh, let's look at negative one over P and uh, the analysis for this is pretty straightforward because to start, we know that this has got to be congruent to negative one to the power uh, P minus one over two by Euler's criterion. And it's got to be congruent to this mod P, right? But wait, we know that P has to be an odd prime. Uh, and we also know that every odd number, odd integer can be written of the form not odd number, but odd integer. I don't even know what odd number would mean if you're not talking about an integer, but yeah. Every odd integer is of the form 4k plus one uh, or uh, 4k plus three. I'm just being careful so that somebody doesn't say, you said number, so your video sucks. Um, anyway, uh, number instead of integers. Anyway, um, yeah, so we know that every um, odd integer is of this form or of this form. And so because P is an odd prime, uh, we know that P is either congruent to one mod four, that is P is of the form 4K plus one, or P is of the form 4K plus three, in which case it'd be congruent to three mod four. But one of these two has to be true about our prime P. Um, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. So then let's first assume that it's of this form. Then negative one to the power of P minus one over two would read negative one to the power uh, 4K plus one, so P minus one over two. But this would read the same as negative one to the power of two K. And we know that two K is even. So we have negative one to an even power, which is positive one. Meaning negative one over P is equal to one only if uh, P is congruent to one mod four. Because uh, if P is congruent to three mod four instead, um, then we'll have the following which is if P is congruent to uh, three mod four, well, I have to adjust is what I wrote beyond here. And so that would read um, uh, negative one to the power um, 4K um, plus three uh, minus one uh, divided by uh, two. And so that would read uh, negative one to the power. Um, this here is 4K plus two. And if I so chose, I can write 4K plus two as two times 2k plus 1. Note, this here says 4k plus 2 and so does this. And now I have to divide by 2 here and when I do, uh, it's pretty clear that I could do this. And so I've got um, negative 1 to the power uh, 2k plus 1. And 2k plus 1 is always odd, so I have negative 1 to an odd power which will be negative 1. Therefore, this here is negative 1 when P is congruent to three mod four. So that's it for negative one over P. But uh, before we go on to two over P, let's note that what we just learned uh, means that we can do things like this uh, if we so chose, or if it somehow uh, suited our purpose, which is three over 11 is the same thing as, uh, we know that this is the same as negative eight over 11. Um, and so then uh, if somehow it suited us to do this, we can then knowing uh, from the properties of the Legendre symbol, which I, by the way, have proved that um, A times B over P, knowing that this is the same as um, A over P times uh, B over P, what you can do now is write this here as 
negative uh, 1 over 11, which you can do through this, and then um, do 8 over 11. Um, and so you can calculate this and this individually and multiply the results, and it'll tell you uh, what this is, and therefore tell you what this is, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we just added some flexibility in being able to manipulate the Legendre symbol. Um, all right, all right, all right. And um, now on to 2 over P, right? So to do the analysis on 2 over P, uh, let's draw a chart. And so let the chart be this, which is, um, suppose, uh, all right, um, at negative zero degrees according to the ruler, it somehow has negative zero and zero um, as being like different angles. All right, and maybe it's the same, I don't know, but it has both. Anyway, uh, left column, let's say we have two over P and let's say uh, we wanna know when this will be one. Uh, we're just experimenting with different P values. So two over P and let's figure out when this will be negative one. So we know that P has to be an odd prime, so our start will have to be with P equals three. So here, uh, three is small enough that we can test them all. So we test as one uh, squared congruent to uh, two mod three, no. One squared is congruent to one mod three. And what about uh, two squared, um, that's four, so that's congruent to one mod three. Four is the same as one mod three. So we see that the only quadratic residue mod three is one, so two isn't it. So we see that three's gotta go on the non-residue column, right? Um, that is two over three is negative one, right? Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so next uh, odd number, sorry, odd prime is five, so, um, well, the only even prime is two, so like, you know, when books specify odd prime, it's kind of almost silly. Um, all right, um, so the next uh, prime we have to test is five, and this two is small enough, we can test one squared, two squared, uh, three squared, uh, four squared, and reduce mod five, right? So one squared is congruent to one mod five, two squared is congruent to four mod five, three squared, which is nine, is congruent to uh, four mod five, 4 squared, which is 16, is congruent to 1 mod 5. Therefore, we see that the only quadratic residues mod 5 are 1 and 4, and so 2 is in it, so 2 over 5 will be negative 1, therefore 5 goes right here. Yeah, okay, uh, let me draw that 5 better. 5 goes right there. Yeah, okay, cool. And uh, the next uh, prime uh, we have to try is 7, and um, so we just have to add a little bit more to... Uh, the list um, of squares we created on the right. So let this be seven, right? So we just have to add um, five squared and six squared to our list and reduce mod seven, right? Um, so let's time mod seven. One squared is one mod seven. Two squared is four mod seven. What about three squared? Three squared is nine, but that's two mod seven. So bingo, we don't have to try the rest. We see that two is a quadratic residue mod seven. So finally, uh, the left column starts with uh, 7. Yeah, okay, cool. So what's the next prime we have to try? 11, and we're definitely not going to create a list for 11. Instead, we're going to use Euler's criterion. We know that by Euler's criterion, um, since a over p uh, has to be congruent to, congruent to a to the power uh, p minus 1 over 2 mod p, since we know that this is true, we can say that uh, to figure out what 2 over 11 is, we can say that this will be congruent to 2 to the power 11 minus uh, 1 over 2, that's 2 to the 5th, and 2 to the 5th is um, 32, so that's 32, um, and 32 is congruent to negative 1 uh, mod 11, right, because it's uh, 1 less than a multiple of 11, namely 33. So we see that 11 is a non-residue, and therefore 11 also goes on this list. Got it. What's next? 13, well, you can try yourself, but 13 is also going to be on this list. Uh, what's after 13? 17. And 17 will be on this list on the left column because, because, um, because of this. Because I know that 6 squared um, is congruent to, or it's equal to 36, which in turn is congruent to 2 mod 17. Therefore, we see that 2 is a quadratic residue mod 17, so appropriate to put 17 on the left column of our list, yeah? Okay, so uh, what's the next number after uh, 17? It'll be uh, 19, right? And 19, it turns out, will be uh, right here. And then uh, what's after that? After that is uh, 23. 
and 23 will be right here and what's after 23 um well not 25 not 27 29 and 29 it will turn out i uh, will be uh here and then what's after that i don't like this 23 so far um after 29 is 31 so 23 and uh 31 will be uh right here and uh now uh let's look at let's look at the numbers uh on the left column versus the numbers on the right column so seven is congruent to uh seven is congruent to uh negative one mod eight 17 is congruent to 1 mod 8. 23 is congruent to uh, negative 1 mod 8. Ah. And then 31 is congruent to, what's 31 congruent to mod 8? It's congruent to 7 mod 8, therefore it's congruent to negative 1 mod 8. Yeah? Okay, whereas, uh, so all of these numbers on the left column are plus or minus 1 mod 8. What, whereas uh, the numbers on the right, well, 3 is clearly congruent to 3 mod 8. 5 is clearly congruent to 5 mod 8, which is the same as, by the way, negative 3 mod 8, as I've already mentioned earlier in the video. And 11 is congruent to 3 mod 8. You get the point. Um, and 13 is congruent to uh, 5 mod 8. Um, 19 is congruent to, uh, what is it? 19 is congruent to 3 mod 8, uh, 3 more than a multiple of 8, right? And then uh, finally, 29 is congruent to uh, 5 mod 8. Uh, and this is pretty convinc convincing uh, list. And so all of the numbers uh, on the right column are uh, congruent to, uh, plus or minus, I didn't write that on the left here, so let me uh, be consistent. Yeah, plus or minus uh, three mod eight. Yeah, okay, cool. This concludes this video, and the next three videos will be giving you examples of uh, working out the Legendre symbol for a large A and a large P and A over P, yeah? All right, cool. Look out for those three examples to come, but I hope you learned a lot from this video. Take care.